Okay, so I had a YouTube subscriber at, uh, ask a question about how we might do a, a, a linear programming uh, problem with a minimization. And she was having problems with this, probably because of this negative coordinate right here. And we'll get into how to deal with that in a second. But let's go ahead, uh, pause the video, and you can set this up. And then we'll proceed to go ahead and solve this problem. Um, these are my constraints for second and third. And so on. We'll go ahead and pause the video. And okay, so you should have paused the video and put this information in on your Excel spreadsheet. So uh, I'm going to do this like I did before. I'm going to solve it two ways. I'm going to use a graphical method and I'm going to use the uh, use a quicker way to do it. So if the graphical method to do graphical, I'm going to do like before. I want to find the intercepts. And uh, the first one, I'm, I'm going to do the first one first, the first, the first uh, constraint. And remember, we say if this is zero, then what does this have to be? Well, this has to be this divided by this. And if this is zero, then this has to be this divided by this. Okay, and then for the second constraint, we can do the same thing. If this is zero, well, then it has to be equal to this divided by this. And if this is zero, then this has to be equal to this divided by this. And then for the third constraint, I would do the same thing. I know I'm going real fast, but you can pause the video and look if you're having problems. Um, if this is zero, uh, this equals this divided by this. And if this is zero, this equals this divided by this. So now I have my intercepts. Um, I can go ahead and make this look real nice. Uh, ball it, center it, I mean, outline it and center it. Remember, this is x1 and x2. Okay, so now we want to graph this. Okay, so one thing you might want to note that I'm using a newer version of Excel from my other videos. I upgraded to Excel 2013. So things might be in a little bit different place, but you should be able to get it by fooling around and looking a little bit if you have an older version of Excel. Uh, and we're doing, I mean, you have the same functionality in the older versions. So now what we're going to do, I'm going to graph it. So I'm going to highlight these first two coordinates. I'm going to go insert and I'm going to go look for the scatter chart like that. Now, if yours didn't come out, see, I, I have, I'm going to, I'm plotting X2 in my Y axis, right? So my first point is five x of 5 and y of 0. So this is x of 5 and y of 0. So it looks correct. The second point is x of 0 and y of 10, x of 0 and y of 10. These aren't correct. You just uh, simply click this and it'll switch for on columns, right? Um, in my case, it didn't do it. But anyway, in older versions, it normally would switch those for you. So now the other thing, so now I'm going to go ahead and delete this because we don't really need a title and I'm going to add a legend. So on this version, I can just click on this and go add legend. All right. And then I can, and that, now what I can do, uh, make sure you click down here somewhere. I'm going to go to select data and I'm going to click on series one and I'm going to go edit. And I'm going to click under series name, I'm going to click first because these are the coordinates. This is the first the first constraint that I graphed. Okay. Now the second constraint that I'm going to graph has got a negative two there, right? That's negative two zero is one of the points. So you can see here, this doesn't go to negative two. So what I could do, I could click down here on this, on this X axis and I could right click and go format axis. I can say the minimum is a negative two. And then that shifts it over so I can see where this is going to be point graphed when I point it or plot it. So now, so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go here and go select data. I'm going to add another constraint. I'm going to add the second. And the x values for the second are right here. And the y values, I delete this, are right here. And I go OK. I'm going to add the third constraint. I'm going to go, this is the series name. The x values are these two. Make sure you delete this, don't highlight it, you gotta delete it, and then it's gonna be these two. Okay. Okay. So now we have our three our three constraints, the 
the three intercepts from our three constraints, plot it. Now the problem is here, this, this, the, these intercepts are on the wrong, these are on the wrong, wrong quadrant. I want this line to extend out into this quadrant, right? And since this was negative, it's, this line is over in this quadrant, so I can't really see what's going on. So I have to extend this line, because this is basically, this line goes on just like these lines go on forever, and these lines go on forever. Since we have these two, so this constraint here says we're stuck to the first quadrant in the Cartesian coordinate system. So I have to extend this out that way. So I can see the slope of this line. For every two in the x, it goes up three. So I could simply go, well, the slope is three halves, right? It has the, the run is, the rise is three, the rise over the run, right? So it goes up three for every two, two in the run. So I could go over two. Well, if it goes up three here, it's going to go one, two, three. And go over two, I can go up three, I can go one, two, three. And go over two more, I can go up three, one, two, three. So actually, I could extend this line out here to x of six, y of 12. So I could change this here, instead of being zero, three, I can change it to six, 12. Okay, so you can see this line still passes through zero, three, but it extended it out into this coordinate. So now, now we can see from the blue line, the first, the first constraint, that's going to be shaded over here to the right. right? I, if I wanted to make sure, I could just pick any point here. So I could pick like 8, 0, right? Because that's to the right of this line. If I plugged in 8, 0 here, 8 times 4 is 32. 0 times 2 is 0. 32 plus 0 is 32. 32 is greater than 20, so I'm to the right of that line. Okay, the gray line is also very similar shade. You can see by here, it went to the right. This also goes to the right because it's very same. So this one would shade, it would be shaded. The blue line would be shaded here. The third constraint would be shaded like here. And the fourth constraint doing something very similar would be shaded down. So it would be shaded here and here, right? And this goes up to infinity. So where it gets shaded all three times would be along this axis and then to here and then to here to here. So my feasible region is right here, bounded right here. This goes out to infinity, it never crosses anything. So it's bounded here, then bounded by the x-axis, then it goes up to here and up to here and up to here. Now, in this case, we could find, we could use fancy algebra to find the solution to these, but you can see these cross exactly. So my corner points, My corner points, um, let me move this over here. My corner points, let me copy this. My corner points for here is two and six. And my corner point here is four and two. And my corner point here is six and zero. So this is actually so nice, we can just read it right off of here. And you could actually, well, we're not going to, I'm not going to prove we're using algebra. You just trust me that those, that's correct, okay? Now I want to calculate our Zs at each one of those corner points. Okay, so let me make this look nice. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here and go equals, I'm going to use, Fancy matrix algebra. So you want to highlight where your aunt, you want to highlight where your answer is going to be. And then go equals m multiply. And I'm going to multiply these, comma, times the transpose. Of my objective function up here. To, and now remember, you have to hit control. Hold down Control, hold down Shift, and then hit Enter, and then you put your answer. So those are my answers. So now remember, we're trying to minimize, so which one's the smallest Z? It's going to be this right here. So that's simply your answer. It's going to be right there. Okay, let me put in the, let me put in the, the formula for this so you see what it is. Okay, so that's the graphical solution. So it's pretty easy. So now let me do the alternate solution. Um, I'm going to go equals this. So you want to have these three here, or these four things here. And then I'm going to copy these out. 
And I'm just going to guess what these are. I'm going to say this is 1 and 1. I don't care at this point what they are. Because we're going to have Excel figure out what they are. And then these, all I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this. And I go equals M multiply. And I'm going to take uh, uh, all these. And I'm going to take them time to transpose of these right here. Close the parentheses twice. Control, Shift, Enter. Okay, so if I change these, if I change this to 2 and 6, you can see this becomes 52, which is that is, right? So if I so as I change these, I'm going to change these numbers here, right? I had a 1 to 1 begin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have I'm going to have Excel figure this out for me now. So I'm going to go to Insert. Or I have to go to Data. And I'm going to go to Solver. And what do we want to do? We want to set this to a minimum by changing these two numbers here. And we want to add some constraints. So I'm going to go Add. And I want to say this first constraint. I'm going to say this, well, the first constraint is greater than or equal to, so I'm going to change this to greater than or equal to that, and go add. The second constraint, I'm going to say this, well, it's less than or equal to, and go 12. I'm going to go add. And the third constraint, I'm going to say this is greater than or equal to this, and then I'm going to go OK. I add those constraints in. It says make unconstrained variables non-negative. So it basically makes this, takes care of this. I'm going to use simplex LP and I go solve. I go OK. And you go down here, you see this change from 1, 1 to 4, 2. And then this became a minimum at 44. So, so that's the way you do a minimization problem. The tricky part is figuring out how to graph this funny line. When you do the intercept method, well, how do I extend that out? So you just have to figure out the slope. You guys, other ways to do it. You could use algebra to figure out this point, but it's pretty easy to see. Two for every two this way it goes up three. So two, three, two, three. So extend it up to see what's going on. Find these two points using algebra. I've done that in other videos. You know, search for one of my maximization problems. It shows you how to find those two points if you want to find them using algebra. In this case, you can just see what they cross right here at the, at the point. So anyway, hopefully that helps. Uh, let me put in the equals formula text. Let's see what that is. Now remember, this is matrix algebra. So you have to highlight where the answer is, type this in, and then go Control Shift Enter. Okay. Uh, these little brackets don't get here until you hit control shift down. All right, so hopefully that helps. Thank you. Bye.